Hello everybody, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I thought I would talk about an application that I've installed in Linux on my desktop PC which is uh, AV Linux MX Edition um, called Mesh Central Server. It's a great little application. I've been using it to uh, manage the uh, devices out on my network. I'll show you that in a moment. And um, But you can use this tool to connect to somebody out on the internet that wishes to have your support for tech supporting their uh, application, whatever it may be, Windows, or Mac, or Linux, uh, and uh, connecting with them and, and making that possible. Uh, like I said, it's a great application. I want to show it to you, and so let's get into it. Right now, you're looking at the Mesh Central Server um, interface, and I forgot to mention that uh, I'm not going to show you how to install it because I've written an article uh, on my website that I uh, go into great detail. It shows you how to step-by-step uh, -step to install this, so I'm not going to do that in this video. What I am going to do in this video, though, is show you the capability that Mesh Central Server brings to you. So we're at the login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in. And I've got two-factor authentication set up for the uh, application, which you can set up. And uh, I go into that on my website as well. And so let me put in the uh, two-factor authentication code using uh, Google Authenticator. And uh, let's log in. All right, and so we're in. Here it is. Uh, we're at the uh, My Devices screen. What I've done is I've set up three separate groups. And to set up a group, you just click on this link, Add Device Group. And that's, so that's what I've done for each one of these. I've set up one group called PCs and Mobile Devices, another group called Single Board Computers, and another one called Windows PCs. Now the Windows PCs, the Windows 10 PC is not a physical uh, device, but it's a, a virtual machine that I'm running Windows 10 on. These uh, here in the PCs and mobile devices, the AVLMXE desktop, that's my desktop, that's running Mesh Central server. The Zorin Acer laptop is um, a, uh, an Acer Aspire laptop that I have running Zorin Linux. And the third device that I have here that's not connected right now is the Zorin Latitude laptop, which is uh, a Dell Latitude E6400. It's a 15-year-old laptop running Zorin Linux. So it's running like a new machine. And so I have been monitoring that one as well. So these three uh, devices are in the first group. The second group is single board computers, and I have two Raspberry Pis. I have a 3B Plus, which is my Pi Hole server. And that's a 1 gig uh, Raspberry Pi. And then I have uh, a Raspberry Pi Model 4, which is running Open Media Vault, which is my network attached storage uh, application. And so these two are in the second group called Single Board Computers. And then the third one, as I mentioned, was running Windows PC, uh, which is a, a virtual machine. Now, in order to connect these up into these groups, you have to add an agent. So when you click on this add agent, it pops up an add agent or a mesh agent window. And if, for instance, with the Windows PC, I tell it that the operating system is Windows and that I wish to install that as an interactive only. So what I do is I click on this link here, which is the mesh agent for Windows X64 EXE file. And, um, and when I do that, I go on to the machine and install the Mesh Agent executable, and it connects immediately to the uh, Mesh Central server. So it's, uh, when it shows Agent, it means that it's, the Mesh Agent is, is connected and ready for use, and uh, it's powered, so it's actually running right now. Uh, when I want to install the Mesh Agent for connecting to, for instance, uh, either the PCs and mobile devices or the single board computers uses the same one. Uh, I click Add Agent and then I tell it rather than Windows, I'm running Linux BSD. Okay, and it pops up a new screen here. And all I have to do is go over and click the copy button here and for the script, and then go onto the machine and copy the script, paste it into uh, the uh, terminal, and uh, run it and it connects just like 
the Windows PC did with the executable. All right, so um, uh, this is the My Devices screen. And uh, as I said, the uh, I've got three different groups set up. So let's connect to one of these, and I'll show you how this works um, before we move on to the rest of these in the, on the sidebar here. So I've got the, uh, not my desktop here, but let's say my Zorin Acer laptop. I want to go in and manage that. So what, I got, what I'm going to do is go up to the PCs and mobile devices, Zorin Acer laptop, click on it, and it opens up this window. Now this is on the general tab, so I can see that it's in the PCs and mobile devices group. Its operating system name is Zorin. The host name is the IP address which is 192.168.1.243. That is correct. Um, for description, I put this in, Acer Aspire Laptop. Uh, the mesh agent that was installed was Linux 64-bit. That was automatically in, uh, uh, implemented here. The operating system is Zorin OS 16.2, and that is correct. Uh, the active user is Data, Data Pioneer, that's me. And uh, I don't have anything here for user con consent because I'm not connecting to this device with anyone's consent. It's my machine. And then the notification here, and I can put a tag in if I want. All right, so if, if I go up to the desktop tab and click on it, I'm presented with this connect and disconnected here. And so what I can do is I can either straight connect or I can right click and choose ask consent and ask consent here or plus bar ask consent but again this is my machine so I wouldn't be doing any one of these uh, and privacy bar uh, just click on that and so what that does is that connects me immediately to the desktop all right and so you're looking at the Zorin OS Linux Acer Aspire uh, laptop and if I click this uh, full screen button it takes it up to full screen where I can see it here uh, better. And this is not a static screen, okay? This is an actual working um, interface with the Zorin laptop. So if I come down here and click uh, this button here, it opens up the window, uh, the, ma the main menu, and uh, lets me get in and do things, all right? If I'm on the web here, I can click in here and I can type in my... Uh, you know, laptop, my uh, uh, website, Western North Carolina Linux Users Group dot com. Um, it's for my group that I belong to. It's the Western North Carolina Linux Users Group Asheville. And uh, as I mentioned, the article for the Mesh Central uh, server installation is on this website. I'll give you the link to it down below the video. But I wanted to show you that you can connect to that. So we're connected to it, and we've got full control over this laptop. Uh, you can come down here and there's some buttons. Alt, you can hit send an alt control delete signal to this laptop or send or clipboard or type. So if you click type, you can type in there. And if I put in, uh, I'm working on your laptop and click OK, it should come up on the screen uh, so that we can see it. And or actually, I think it comes up on the terminal, so we're not in the terminal right now. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's try that again. I'm working on your laptop. Yeah, so it, it came up in the uh, terminal to uh, let the individual that would be on that laptop which could be somebody who's borrowed the laptop from me or somebody that's using it on my network. And it it's, gives them a message uh, to let them know that I'm, I'm actually connected to them. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, close this down. And let's disconnect from the desktop. <clears throat> now, if I want to get into the terminal and don't want to get onto the desktop itself, I can click this tab. And then I can right-click on the terminal connect button and click the login shell that's how I like to log in and so I can type in the username which is data pioneer and the password put that in and I'm, I'm connected now you'll notice I did not have to SSH into this machine um, this is a connection that mesh agent allows me to do and I can just log in directly 
I'm actually logged in now in the terminal on that laptop. And if I do an LS uh, LH, it shows me, you know, the uh, strata here of all the, you know, f uh, folders and files uh, in the uh, home directory. And if I do a PWD, you can see the home directory is home data pioneer. But uh, what's, what's neat about this is I can run commands here now that I'm on the terminal. For instance, if I want to update it, I can do that. But I want to show you a different way to do that. Uh, that I like. It's even slicker than this. Uh, but you do have buttons down here again. Control C, Control X. For instance, if you're running a, a nano uh, uh, editor, you can use the Control C, Control X buttons for that, for saving files and, and such as that. Escape for getting out of it. And uh, you've got a timer over here for the length of time that you're, you've been connected uh, in the terminal. And uh, you can hit this button and get various uh, commands here and then click the send button to send those all right I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from the terminal and show you the uh, what I wanted to show you earlier uh, a different way of getting in here and running commands so let's click back on the general tab and you've got a, a row of uh, buttons here actions notes log event run um, and so if I click on the uh, actions button, it brings up this device action window. And I can do things like wake up the machine, uh, run commands, sleep, reset, power off, uninstall the agent from the device. So if I were connected to somebody remotely and they uh, installed the software that I provided them, uh, then I could come back in here and uninstall the agent software after we're done. And so it's not resident on their computer. So let's do uh, run commands, and I'll click OK, and it presents this run as agent window. I can run it differently. I can run it as uh, user, uh, agent if no user, or must run as a user. I'm going to run it as an agent, okay? And uh, this might be something I would do if somebody connected to me, or I connected to them and offered tech support. And so here I want to run a, an update, so I'm going to do a sudo apt um, install or update sorry and uh, two ampersand symbols and then sudo apt update upgrade and use a y switch all right and what that's going to do is it's going to run this command and if it's successful then it will run the second command and then the dash y option here says I don't have to answer any screens just say yes to anything that prompts me for do you want to do this or not so I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to go to the console of that machine and you can see it's already running uh, the, the command I just gave it so it's actually running updates on the laptop itself um, and it, it's presenting that to me in the console um, but you know that laptop is not anywhere near me it's uh, on my local area network, but it's uh, I don't have it in front of me. And so uh, this is a great thing that you're able to update your machines right across the uh, local area network without even being inside of the machine itself using this mesh agent, which I think is a great thing. Like I said, it's much faster than SSHing into the device and running the command I just ran in the terminal of that device. And uh, probably... Well, just as secure, because SSH is, is a secure application. All right, so it's just about finished. The, the thing that's nice about it is if I break away from it, it's still running that command in the background. So if I go back to the console, you can see it's still running here. So it doesn't break the uh, command that it ran. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a note here. All right, so I'm going to click on, on a note, and I'm going to say ran updates on this laptop today uh, 3 4 2023 okay and click OK all right so if somebody comes in behind me or if I come back to the uh, to manage this machine again and I want to know as you know when's the last time I updated the machine I can just go in here and click on notes and there's a there's a note that says ran updates on this laptop today on 3 4 2023 so um, you know, that's a good thing to have because it keeps a, a log of, of actions that you've taken on the, on the device itself. Um, 
And if I do a log event, I can click that and do the same thing. So if I go back to the notes, uh, let me cancel this out. Let me go back to the notes. And if I uh, right click and, and copy this, okay, and then cancel and then run log event, right click and paste, and then click OK. Now what that did was that actually updated the logs for this device. So I can go up to events and you can see it that at 4.41.38 p.m. Data Pioneer, that's me, ran updates on this laptop today at 3.4.2023. So it, it actually created an event in the event log for this particular device. All right, so that's, that's a great capability of having as well. Uh, details shows you uh, a plethora of information about the laptop itself and finally files uh, if you connect here it shows you all the files that you have resident on that laptop these are all folders and if I go into home and data pioneer you can see you know all of my the documents and and that kind of thing so this is uh, a, a great feature as well so let me go ahead and disconnect from that all right, and then additionally, if I, you know, disconnect from the laptop and I want to manage my one of my Raspberry Pis, I can do that. Same thing that I did here. Now this one is kind of unique because this is a virtual machine, and so if I click that, and then click desktop and connect to it, see I'm connected to my desktop, my Windows 10 PC, um, you know, as a virtual machine, so I can actually run, you know, commands run Windows 10 from here I can expand it just like it did the other one and uh, run commands from the machine here and um, you know it's as if I were sitting in front of the virtual machine all right so let me go ahead and close that down again so let's now that's so this is the my devices section so let's go on over the next thing is the my account sections so if I click on my account uh, you see the device groups here, the PCs and mobile devices, single board computers, and the Windows PCs. Uh, here's my image here that shows I'm the, the individual in the, in the account security interface uh, for my account. Under the account security, I can manage uh, the authenticator app, and this is how you would set up two-factor authentication. I don't want to do anything here because I don't want to remove it, so I'm going to click Cancel. Uh, but you click OK to, and it walks you through the process of setting up the 2FA on like the Google Authenticator, or Microsoft Authenticator, or Authy, or one of the other authenticators. Um, if I want to manage security keys, I don't have any configured, but if I did, I can use hardware keys here, and I can add a key as well. So let me go ahead and close that. Uh, if I want to back up the piece, the back up the server rather, I can manage backup codes. And, um, and do things there uh, as well. Uh, view previous uh, logins. If I click that, it shows uh, the last login was uh, from 192.168.1248. That's this machine here, the, the desktop that I'm on. And it tells the date and time of the login. All right. And if there are any failures, it tells the failures as well. So there, here are two invalid 2FAs that were provided um, that did not allow that individual to get in. All right. Uh, down under the account actions, you can enable web notifications. Um, you can do localization settings. Here I use uh, the browser values, but you can set your own language. You can, uh, for date and time, set your own uh, date and time settings here as well. Uh, but I let the browser values supply that information here. All right. Um, for notification settings, you can tick or untick these things. I have display device group name ticked. Um, problem with uh, ticking too many of these is, is that every time a device connects or disconnects or whatever, unless, unless you really want to see that, it's going to bug you. So you might want to consider um, you know, only ticking these when you really want to uh, know when a device connects or when it disconnects or whatever. You can set up a notification sound here by ticking that box. Um, you can change the email address for the account. You can change the password for the account. You can delete the account if you want, and you can create login tokens. Uh, so you can click that. You can put a token name. 
you can even put an expiry of when you want it to expire. Uh, so that's pretty slick here for uh, creating login tokens. All right, so let's go down to the next screen. Uh, this is, I've shown you this already. This is my events, and it uh, records in the system, uh, not just for this machine that I was on earlier, but for every machine that's connected, any event that occurs on that machine that's pertinent to the mesh central server will get recorded here in the events log. Uh, there's a way to do it, uh, you know, globally, and there's a way to do it for each machine. All right. So here's your Zorin Acer laptops. Here's your Windows 10 PC. Here's your Pi whole server on RPi 3B plus, etc., etc. So this is all the machines, all the devices it's looking at there. Next tab down, um, if I click on that, that's my files. And so here uh, by group uh, are the, uh, the files that you can get into. Here's root, and here are my files, and public, etc., etc. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that. A lot of detail there. And let's go up the, uh, the chain there. All right, so the next thing is my users. And I just have one user set up, and that's Data Pioneer. But I can add additional users as needed. And then lastly, here, this is the my server section. And uh, server actions that you can accomplish here are things like download a server backup and then restore server from a backup or with a backup. So if I click that button, it allows me to backup the entire server. And then I can click here to restore from where I stored it uh, if something goes wrong. So if this falls over, I can restore it and I don't have to worry about rebuilding it. Um, I can check the server version. It's loading it right now. It says that I'm using uh, the current version of 1.1.4 and that the stable version is 1.1.0 with the latest version being what I'm currently running. All right, let's cancel that and show server error log. And it says the server has no error log. So I've been running this mesh central server now probably for three weeks or longer and uh, no logs, no errors have been recorded uh, that the server has generated. So that's a great thing. That means it's a very uh, robust and uh, secure server environment and uh, the performance on this server is really good. All right, so you can see here under the server statistics that the CPU load for one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes is well within norm, okay, 0.67. It's going up and down, 0.76 and 0.79. Anything under uh, two should be good here on this particular server because I have two cores. And then uh, available memory, it's only using 4.9 gigabytes uh, out of a total of 15.5. It's actually 16 gigabyte total. The server state is it's got one user account, one user session, three user groups or de device groups rather. Uh, two relay sessions, one agent or five agent sessions, one relay count, uh, one connected user, and two connected or zero connected Intel AMT. Intel AMT is pertinent only to Windows 10 and 11 or Windows any Windows version really that uh, uses AMT. And I did not connect to Windows 10 using AMT. I connected to it using the Mesh agent. Otherwise, if I did, it would show a one there. Okay, so uh, if I come across to statistics here, I get a graphical view, and this is for the last three hours. If I arrow down, I can do the last day. This shows the, the agent, what's happening to the agent here, what's happening to users, uh, and then uh, this one green, which is relay sessions, showing activity there for that, and then the connections here. Uh, for memory, for instance, here's some memory statistics for CPU. Here's some um, CPU statistics. I don't see anything being recorded uh, last three hours. I don't see anything being recorded there for some reason. But anyway, that's how you would get it there. Console, uh, if anything's happening in the console on this particular desktop PC, it would be showing up here. And then I can do a, a trace of uh, the server itself to see what's going on with that. So this has been a quick review of Mesh Central Server. It's an application that I chose to install directly. Uh, and as I said, I'll 
remind you that I've written an article. I'll post a link to it uh, down below the video so that you can go and uh, follow it and install Mesh Central Server just like I did. I've got 18 devices on the uh, uh, on my LAN. I've only connected uh, six or seven of them. Uh, so eventually I'll be connecting more devices. And, uh, and I can manage those devices all from one console, which is really nice. Okay, um, so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. If you uh, got some information out of it that you uh, can use, that's a good thing. Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you would. It helps me grow. I appreciate it. It's Data Pioneer. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.